Hi class, in this video, I'm going to show you how to carry out a spatiotemporal cluster analysis using two new R packages, TSClust and DTWClust. I'll do that by walking you through an example based on nationwide data on police brutality. The first thing we'll be doing is setting up the data, making sure that it's in a tidy format so that we can analyze it with greater ease. Okay, and then we'll go through three different methods to determine the optimal number of clusters for our data. And finally, we're going to plot our spatiotemporal data uh, using ggplot2's facet wrap function. So to start, we're going to activate all the libraries we'll be needing to run the code in this video. If you haven't installed these packages already, I would recommend doing that before um, calling the library function to activate them. And now after that, we'll go ahead and load in the police brutality data that we are interested in performing the cluster analysis on. Let's go ahead and use the head function to see exactly what is in this data set. So we can see from down here that one of the columns is state, the other is year, and the final column is the number of police brutality cases reported. But before we can go forward, we'll need to replace any cells with missing values with a zero or else the analysis won't run properly in R. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and now we'll also convert the long formatted data into a wide format to also ease uh, data analysis in future steps. Okay, and now we're also going to tell our, again, to replace missing values with zero. We'll also go ahead and be omitting the first column for the sake of simplicity for now. And we can go ahead and see that when we call the head function. So no more state names here in the first column, just a bunch of numbers. Uh, now we'll go ahead and use a function from the tsclust package called dis to calculate the dissimilarity matrix, which describes pairwise distinctions in our data. So let's go ahead and run that line of code. And finally, we're going to go ahead and put the state names back into our data. Okay, now with that, our data is almost ready for cluster analysis, but before we can analyze, we have to determine the optimal number of clusters to, pit, to bin our data into. We can figure that out using three different methods. The first is called the elbow method, and let's go ahead and run the code for that. And when we do run the code, it generates this plot, um, which has the total within cluster sum of squares. And we can see this asymptotic trend here, which kind of looks like a bent arm or elbow, which is where the method gets its name from. Uh, we can use this plot to determine a range of ideal cluster values. And in this case, it's those non-plateau values. So, uh, we see cluster one, two, three, four, and it starts to kind of plateau until I would say we hit about cluster 10 here. So according to the elbow method, uh, the range for ideal cluster values is between one and 10. Uh, the good news is that we can refine that range by using the next two methods. Uh, first, we can carry out a silhouette analysis to determine the optimal cluster number. So when we run this code, uh, we see that the best cluster number based on our data is four. Uh, lastly, we can also apply the Kalinske criterion uh, using this code. And if we look at the plots that it produces, uh, especially this one over to the right, uh, we see that the ideal number of clusters it recommends is 10. So now let's see what these recommendations would look like if we were to cluster our data according to these methods suggestions. 
Uh, we can do this by conducting hierarchical agglomerative clustering with a dendrogram that looks something like this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in because it's kind of hard to see. All right, so each of these numbers here represents um, an individual state, and we see here in this dendrogram that they are loosely clustered. So uh, now let's see what the clustering would look like if we took up the silhouette analysis recommendation of four clusters. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in again. And we see here each of these red rectangles represents a cluster. So in the first cluster here, we see um, a single state. In the next cluster, the second one, we see two states. And in the third and fourth clusters here, we see much more data. Uh, notice how big these last two clusters are compared to the first two that we looked at. Uh, this is perfectly OK, but I would say that this is not ideal for data analysis. Uh, but what about the Kalinsky criterion's recommendation of 10 clusters? Let's go ahead and try to run that, see what that looks like. So in this dendrogram, those uh, Kalinsky criterion clusters are in these smaller uh, red rectangles here. And um, we see in this case that the 10 clusters are more evenly distributed across our data. So I think it would be best to stick to the 10 clusters uh, for analysis purposes rather than the four. So let's go ahead and merge the cluster membership back into our original data. Uh, so we can go ahead and plot some graphs. Now, there are a couple ways we can handle plotting our spatiotemporal data using ggplot2. Uh, we can either plot all of the, the data all at once. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Uh, this might take a second to load. Here we are. So uh, this came out pretty nicely, but uh, it's pretty jam-packed, uh, which is pretty difficult to analyze. So uh, alternatively, and what I think is better, is when we have um, plots according to the cluster group, when we have this much data. So let's go ahead and try to plot cluster by cluster. So let's go ahead and start with the first cluster. OK, this is a much smaller group and much more easier to analyze. Let's try plotting the second cluster. OK. Uh, you can keep running the code for all 10 clusters to plot them all and analyze them. Uh, but we see here from the second cluster that over time, uh, the number of police brutality cases fluctuates but in each of these states, uh, they've decreased in recent years. Uh, this ends our tutorial on spatiotemporal cluster analysis, and I hope that this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please post them on this week's discussion board. Thank you.